many thanks for staying on the air. Sure it's not time to talk about uh, assault, sexual assault, and even all the other forms of assault that people have to go through in the in the office space, at home, you know, in school. It's quite a disturbing trend. Now, Dofsu statistics say that 15,749 cases of sexual and gender-based violence was recorded in 2015 alone. Now, that's pretty disturbing. And uh, two days ago, we heard the story of the Tichiman chief fire officer who had his penis bitten into because according to the lady who inflicted that wound on him he was trying to have sex with her forcibly and she had not succeeded in trying to tell him she wasn't interested so she decided to lure him and eventually uh, bit into his penis we're going to have the conversation around this and i'm sure you have a lot of questions uh, you want answered you can send me your messages on the number 0560 i've got uh, it was Kevin Annan here with me. He's uh, maybe I should call him a relationship <laughs> relationship expert, but he's also a counselor. We're going to look into the details of this. What are the signs you should pick up so you're not caught by surprise with some of these uh, these issues? If you're a lady or even a, a young man who is um, suffering some form of assault, or uh, maybe the cues you should be looking for in a potential assault case. Thank you so much for joining us, Kevin. Thank Welcome you for back to Ghana. You again. Thank you. How was Brazil? Ah, it was peaceful, mm -hmm. uh, beautiful country, a uh, lot of lessons to be learned. Mm. I posted something on my Facebook wall about some of the lessons I learned on mm. this particular journey. I recall being served cashew juice in a hotel. Cashew? Cashew juice. Wow. How was it? <laughs> Very nice. Mm. And I've been wondering why we export all our cashew and we don't have cashew juice. Well, on the front page of the BNFT says lack of regulatory body in the cashew sector. But let's get oh, into, really? Yes, let's get <laughs> into the issue, <laughs> the issue of assault. So, you're a counselor, and I'm sure you've spoken to quite a number of people. Yeah. Physically, mentally, verbally, sexually, a lot of people suffer assault in, in the yeah. house, at work, in school. First of all, are you... What's your reaction to this statistic by, by Dovsu? Well, I am not surprised, and uh, I dare say that this would be reported cases. What about the unreported cases? Oftentimes, you may have about three times the numbers unreported, especially with the males also, uh, tending to keep everything to themselves and not wanting to talk about it. So you may have a situation where a lot more females do the reporting, than males because males tend to internalize and process it through a cognitive um, restructuring or structuring um, way of doing things. Women want to verbalize it and talk about it because that helps them to vent out the pain and then also helps them to solicit for help um, through conversations or through counseling. So you may find a situation where more women will be looking for help but males not look for help at all and they will endure it because more especially when our uh, setting socialization wise you'll be told that bare men soon mm. men don't cry so to show that you're a man you don't shed tears so if you even have tears you have to keep it to yourself and many males suffer what I call emotional damage because they cannot express those emotions because that makes them come across as being weak mm. So let, let's talk about the, the cues and the hints. You know, sometimes um, when we hear some of these cases, for example, with this case in particular, where the municipal officer whose manhood was bitten into has been suspended. And mm. um, for many people who've tried to understand the story, the question they ask is, but why would uh, uh, this lady accept to wash his clothes? He came over to mm. the house, came to wash, uh, came to ask the lady to wash his clothes, and on and on and on and on. Sometimes when you hear stories of assault, you know, especially sexual, physical, you know, you hear the story, you're wondering, but why couldn't they pick the cues? Why couldn't they see mm. it? Well, without seeking to pry into the this specifics issue. of this yeah. case, I hear it's still under investigation. Exactly. Who we'll grant the investigators the right exactly. to do so. Exactly. But let's talk in that the, the general, general terms. terms um, it is unfortunate on both sides if it is that the perpetrator and the victim go through such an experience is sad. Why would we get to this point? Um, 
there are some women who believe that if a man loves you, he's going to physically attack you. And uh, that shows that he wants to protect you. That is the way he exhibits his love. And so oftentimes these women, when they go through such situations, they go and report it to their mothers or elderly folks. They will encourage them, oh, he's showing he loves you. And so they say it like this, if a man loves you, he'll beat you small. <laughs> <laughs> but there's nothing like beating you small. Mm. And assault can come in different forms. There are verbal assaults that comes in the form of threats mm. to an individual. And you, you put them in a state of discomfort where they cannot anymore live a peaceful life, a life that gives them a certain congenial atmosphere where they thrive better. So there's a need for people to pick the cues. Now, for instance, if you are in a relationship now and the person fumes and rages at any little thing, that there's disagreement or he shows discomfort, then you have an indicator that this person potentially could be aggressive, could be violent. There are those who use cynicism and sarcasm mm. in their conversation. You can be very sure that when you have a situation where the relationship is consummated into marriage, this person will not be generous at all with kind words. He's going to be sarcastic with kind words, I mean, words of derogation that will demean you and destroy your persona. Now, it's also sometimes the way they control, sometimes a power play. Males who are insecure try to control the women in their lives. Mm. They teleguide you and micromanage your decisions. So you don't have a life to yourself. Now you're going to have him try to tell you what to do, where to go, who to associate with, and all those things. Of course, if it's something which is mutually discussed, that's different. Now, you will not be recognized as an individual. He sees you more as an opportunity, a target to be shut down. And those are the ones that suffer what I have diagnosed as the Pampana Syndrome. Mm. The Pampana Syndrome comes from our early play days as young boys we had this game where it was a cowboy shooting game we divided ourselves into two parts two groups one group may be those tall boys and all the diminutive figures <laughs> in one group or sometimes we use our shirts mm. all those in colored shirts in one group all those in plain shirts in another group and then if you didn't have a wooden plank shaped into a gun you your four fingers were held like this with a other three together pretending to have a gun. Oh so when I saw the other person from the opposing side, I go, Bushia. And the idea is that I've shot you, so be out. Now, there are young men and older men I have seen in my practice who suffer this Pampana syndrome. And for them, any woman they see in sight must be shot. So he sees a plump lady, Bushia, a slender lady, Bushia. And for them, it's just objects to be shot down so they don't see a human being. And those individuals, their philosophy is when persuasion fails, force must be applied. So he, he gets just towards you in a way that is questionable. The moment you accommodate and facilitate that kind of gesturing, you stand the risk of becoming the object of his mm. uh, pampana prowess. Mm. And those folks will stop at nothing. They use coercive powers. They use manipulative powers. They even go to the underworld casting spells on people. Now, there are people who have also been assaulted spiritually, where people use spiritual authority that they have over those individuals. And therefore... Um, touch not the anointed is the famous one that comes to mind. So you would have people who should know better, mm. who are in authority. Some could be pastors, some could be church leaders, could be choir directors, could be youth workers, whatever it is. Once there's a, an element of trust, people ought to be careful not to go Perhaps. beyond the boundaries that have been set for them. So you hear a whole lot of stories. Yes, sir, like of one people. pastor who said he was exercising demons from a young girl and uh, well uh, ha inserted her f his fingers into her parts and all that but um, 
I'd have you hold on a bit. I have lawyer Morris Ampal on the line. Let's to get the legal perspective of this. How far can one go in saying that, well, this was self-defense? Good morning, lawyer Ampal. Thank you for joining us. Hello, lawyer Ampal. Morning. Good morning, my sister. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Now let's talk about uh, sexual abuse and uh, this particular story. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've heard it by now of this young girl who bit into the penis of a man she claims was trying to rape her. And well, it's been said that was her self defense. Legally, how far can one go in self defense in a sexual assault case? It's a very dicey issue. And when it comes to sexual uh, uh, issues, the, 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 the self defense is not well defined. But I think you need minimum uh, force to, to defend yourself. Uh, and what you need to do at this situation where a man is provoking you uh, in, uh, extremely is difficult, where you are being attacked by a man, uh, uh, you, you need to either they will tell you to scream or, or to resist. And how far can a woman resist a man? The, the issue now is that we have so many methods by which, but I think that one of the methods is what exactly the, this uh, victim did, and I, I fully support because you see, he was, the woman was, came at a street provocation, and then at the street provocation, anything can happen, and you can be, you can be justified in law. So me, the method by which this lady used to free herself is legally justifiable because she used her arm. Which is testified in law to protect himself from being abused, personally. So I think that I support uh, uh, this kind of self defense. Men must know better. I do it. He's an aggressor, he's a criminal, and they, they can even uh, uh, commit murder through it. You cannot allow a lot of things yeah. happen to you when you are doing it. So this is a, a, a good defense, and I believe that this is one of the self defense that the law must encourage. That men who attempt to raise women must be resisted to this means. And I, I fully support uh, that the, the girl assaulted uh, and caused uh, a minimum uh, damage to this man's manhood. And I think that uh, it, it is good. Uh, it serves as a deterrent for men who always want to take advantage of innocent and poor women by raping them and defying them and assaulting them. Uh, let's talk about other forms of um, assault. Uh, let's talk about verbal and emotional, mental assault. Does the law make provision for that? Can I, mm -hmm. can I come to the court of law to see this, this gentleman is mentally and emotionally assaulted me? Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, the law make provision for all kinds of assault. Uh, 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 and the law recognizes assault to come from verbal, physical, emotional. But this uh, uh, assault is when, you see, when you attempt to commit a crime, you have already committed it. So, an attempt to commit a crime, rape a lady, it, it is a crime. And the lady, you know, it's, I think that we should not allow women to, to be raped before we go and report. We have a situation in Ghana where women are raped when they come out to report, nothing is done about it. Society rather tell around to blame the women that they are prostitutes, that they, 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 they allow it to happen to them. I think that we need to train our young women in self defense. When you go to Israel, you train your hands for war. They, you cannot rape an Israeli woman. Ghanaian women must wake up and train themselves to defend themselves. And I think that one of the ways by defending themselves is what they badly this young lady have done. If a woman dare uh, try to rape you, if you can touch the testis, that is well. Hit it well, the testis, hit it well. To defend the woman, the man. And if, if you can also go ahead and cause minimum damage to the man who do it, it, it is just by the law, and I think that you will you, be dedicated. And I, I believe that this lady should be made an ambassador. It should be this lady should be taken to all the secondary schools, mm. churches, and, and, and to educate women and uh, defend themselves. And how to defend and, themselves? And I fully support what the lady did. All right, loyal. But this, you, you made a very interesting point that sometimes society comes out to blame these women and say they're prostitutes and all that. Away from law, just your opinion on this matter, where people argue that the signs were clear. Why couldn't you pick up the cues early and you know prevent something like this from happening? Prevent what's happening? 
that, I, I would do. That, 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 what happened? Yes, and I'm saying that the argument sometimes is that, uh, for example, this, this uh, chief fire officer claims that this, this lady is his girlfriend, and he went over to her house to get his things washed, and, you know, and I've been speaking to um, Emma's Kevin Annan, who's a counselor, and he's been telling us about some of the cases that he has to preside over, and sometimes... There are cues. You can see it. Uh, the, the gentleman uh, is a bit controlling, domineering, and you still stay in the relationship. And then these things happen, and then you're crying. For many people, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's a non-starter for them because the, the signs were clear. So why didn't you act? Ma 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 madam, 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 let me tell you something. This recent is saved by the commander. It's after thought. It's after thought. You see, we need to condemn uh, the, uh, the behavior and the conduct of this commander. There is a superior, a boss, going to the house of the worker. Yeah, yeah. That relationship. Do we have to uh, encourage uh, office romance? Should we, should we encourage office romance? A boss coming out to say that uh, the, the employee, a young poor employee is my girlfriend. But then really we should condemn it. We should condemn it. And let me tell you something. Many a times, when a woman is in love, he will never call them to you. When a woman is faced with a situation when a man is an aggressor, how can a boss come to a female in your house at that early hour? And if, if there is a relationship, how would the, the lady uh, commit uh, the same uh, cause? Uh, the damage to the manhood, it would never happen. So this story of being in a relationship it is the man who has to prove the only double doubt that that's the girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And at, at this instant, this, it happens in the, this thing happens in the, in, the, in the room of the lady. So the, the man has committed what we call unlawful entry by entering a woman's a woman room at that only hour. You were not invited. Then you went there and then you wanted to have the way. But, 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 the lady, but the lady agreed to wash the clothes, you know, so she allowed him in. She agreed to wash the clothes. What she did oh, not agree to was the, the, the sexual, you know. Yeah, please. If a lady can agree, even a lady can decide to go naked. A lady can be in a room with you and go naked and tell you that don't do it. You see, when it comes to issues of sexual abuse, the concept of woman is critical. We don't care whether that's your girlfriend. You can't even read your, your wife. Oh, that way, it's a red. So let me let us know that the problem I have listed. Even the warrant you uh, uh, and having sex without your consent. So what did the man do? Was the man forcing that girlfriend is a criminal offense? You can't even force your wife to have sex. How much more your girlfriend? And then being the, the superior, the, the boss, this attitude of our men, our big men, our, 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 our leaders, bosses, uh, 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 men of God, uh, politicians, those who are supposed to know better, taking advantage of the poor, the innocent. As you speak right now, a lot of young girls are uh, going to get treatment before they engage you, before they employ you, 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 you go through a lot of sexual abuses and harassment and office. And I think that we need to support this young lady, let's resist this, this uh, 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 kind of behavior and let's begin to look at this on a bigger picture. And thank you very much, lawyer Ampal, uh, for giving us some legal insights into sexual assault and uh, how far someone can go in self-defense. But back to you. Uh, before I come back to you, there are a few comments here. And uh, this one says, Lawyer Morris Ampal is causing fear and panic to we the men. Uh, you're asking what kind of self-defense is this? She had bitten any other part, uh, any other part of his body apart from his penis. Anyway, lesson to all men in similar relationships. This is Frederick Kapong Arthur. And uh, this one says, as human as we are, our sexual desires need not to overcome our emotion. Okay, being in a relationship is one thing and seeking concern for intimacy is another. Francis Impando is sending that. Thanks for your comments. And then, uh, Please, uh, this one is saying there's a difference between a district fire officer and a chief fire officer. Okay. All right. 
Okay, thanks. But some reports indicate that he's a Tichima chief fire officer. Mm -hmm. We'll just get the, the clarity over there. And uh, this one says, I don't know what brought about this issue. The woman uh, had to do what she had to do in defense. It's right that the woman defended herself. This man is a man of law, and he should know what the law says. If you call someone to watch for you, does that mean you should assault her? All right. I'll pick your comments uh, soon. There's a lot more coming, but us what can a lady do if she begins to pick signals and cues that there could be a potential assault case even before it gets to the point of manifesting if you advise a woman let's just say she's so much in love with this young man and for many women and i'm a young girl and i and i have a lot of friends who are young women who are not married they're like oh this is just that one spot that you know, negates, you know, what I have. But he's a lovely gentleman. This is, this is a little thing. So what can they do? Well, it is said that uh, Neyman was a Syrian army officer, but the moment you introduce but, it annuls whatever favorable description you have given about an But we are all not perfect. Yeah, we are not perfect. But you see, there are some things that are character-oriented. There are other things that are on the spur of the moment. Now, if you make a judgment this is relating to character, you don't take unnecessary risk. It will be too great a risk to take. Now, if a man is harassing you, for instance, many of them start as innocent harassments. And sometimes it's a commentary that is run about, about you. The person begins saying all kinds of things about your physical outlook. It can be very It makes possible. very suggestive statements and comments about you you've got to pick the cues from there and avoid such a character because usually in ghana i mean you go to some offices so common to find guys tapping on the back sides of ladies tickling them making all kinds of suggestive statements to them and some of these ladies don't see anything in it until it gets to a certain proportion and they realize oh, uh, uh, i should have nipped it in the bud so if you say it's just a one-off incident fantastic everything starts with a one-off incident but we've got to be able to be sure that this thing is not going to grow. And it growing is not dependent on you. It's dependent on the other party. So if they don't show any magnanimity towards you, then it's going to get worse. Hmm. Now, the other thing also is this, that too many of our women have lost their sense of dignity. Too many of them. And sitting where I sit, I encounter women who, like, they take from other young ladies who say, Use what you have to get what you want. So it registers with some men that ultimately many of the women are using what they have to gain what they want. And so for them, then that's a fertile ground mm. for these kinds of activities. Now, if you're a lady in the office and you're seeking for promotion, go through the proper channel. Meritocracy is what we should encourage. People should merit what it is that they get. But unfortunately, some ladies know some other ladies who have confided in them that they got the big man, they got the so-so and so, um, one night out, one lunch time, one dinner together, one trek somewhere, and now they have a leverage about them. You go to the tertiary schools, and it's a, it's a known <laughs> secret, mm -hmm. you know, that there are some ladies who did very well simply because they were so close to the lecturer. That is why the GS would always caution teachers, tutors, in terms of how they engage students. Because the moment you get too familiar with a student, you stand the risk of compromising and giving them leverage above the others. Mm. So there's a need for us as women, first and foremost, to ask ourselves, what is our worth? A woman who knows her worth will not condone some of these things. And if you know your worth, a man coming to you at 12 midnight, clearly, like the lawyer said, an ungodly hour, what do you have to do with this person who visits you at that time? That raises questions. Is this man a married man? And that what became of the issue of fidelity in marriage and all that? You know? So there are so many things that young ladies in subordinate positions do, hoping they will have access to greater grounds in an organization. And it's so common. What, in your opinion, makes women stay in, a, in abusive or potentially abusive relationships? Oh, yeah. I think that you see largely women are very loyal in their inclination naturally. Um, 
quite apart from the temperaments and their role that they play in people being loyal, women generally have a very strong attachment to loyalty. The other thing also is the sympathy of women. Women naturally tend to be more sympathetic towards people, so they wouldn't want to be the one to betray you. They wouldn't want to be the one to cause your, uh, the loss of you in your position in terms of uh, if you're an officer. So women generally would want to do those kinds of things. Uh, the other thing also is how we descend on the women. You know, she didn't dress well, she had done this, she had done that, she invited it for herself, maybe she deserved it. And so many women also then go through the rationalization process. Oh, maybe I did something wrong. Even a little child who has been abused. I read a story of a 60-year-old man raping a five-year-old child, and he said the child tempted him. And I'm just... Five years. How, how can that be? When he was sent to court, he now found solace in the devil made me do it. Mm. But <laughs> the last time I checked, the devil never makes anybody do anything. Never. And I want all the heavy theologians to come. We can discuss it. The devil does not make anybody do anything. Anybody who does anything, does it by choice. And they call it temptation. But the temptation, the description about temptation is that you are drawn by your own lustful desires. Mm. And you acquiesce it. So if you give a tacit approval to temptation that comes your way, clearly you have given yourself away, and you can't blame it on the devil. And those who read the Bible should read it carefully. Go to the book of Genesis in chapter 3. You realize that the man says the woman, the woman says the serpent. Who does the serpent blame? The God who created him. And God won't take any excuse from anybody. If and he so didn't take it in, punished everybody. he didn't take it in the Garden of Eden, who told you he's going to take your excuse? Mm. When anybody does anything, it is very easy to find solace and comfort and, and security in the devil made me do it. And it's so common in this country. The devil doesn't make anybody do anything that they did not choose to do. It could look attractive, it could look tempting, it could look alluring, but you take a decision to walk towards it and pick it. So everybody needs inhibition. When it is that you are being invited into something that will cause you trouble, and weigh your actions and the consequences thereafter before you thrust yourself into them. You know, and, and sometimes the other thing that makes women vulnerable has to do with the pension to want to have it all at a go. So they'd rather stay with a rich man exactly. who'd, who'd, who'd abuse them exactly. and, and, and have a car to ride in town yeah. and have money to shop. Then to leave him exactly. and then be the other time on PM Express we discuss mobile phones and relationships where a man buys a phone for a lady and he insists to see who has called you, your call log, checks your messages. I mean that's clearly abusive. If you did it as a gesture of generosity, mm. fantastic. Let it be there. But do not demand to look through the phone simply because you are the one who bought it for me. That is abusive. And so, anybody who is going to abuse, first and foremost, you are ripped of your dignity. You are ripped of your power to be an individual. Thirdly, you realize that you'd, every decision of yours, every choice of yours, must receive approval from whoever is abusing you. And if you don't have that approval, you can't be you. There's a need to discover the unique person first before you try to connect with everybody. If you don't, you're in big trouble. Mm. So, you know, someone is sitting at home saying, wow, I'm, I'm picking some signs that I may be in an abusive relationship. I'm beginning to see why my relationship isn't working. Maybe we fight a lot more than, you know, usually should happen. What can the person do? What should the person do? Should they just call it quits? You see, when it comes to conflict and its management, Human nature as it is, once we are different, there will be differences in our viewpoints. There will be differences in approach to finding solution to issues that confront us. Mm -hmm. And those differences themselves lend themselves to conflict. Now, when conflict comes up, we have to ask ourselves, this conflict, what is going to be its impact upon us when it lingers on? Would it be fatal to the extent that there may be injury? There may be life-threatening situations? 
if there's going to be injury, there's going to be life-threatening situation, then you've got to think twice about your decision to stay in it. I, I got educated when I was in Europe one time that the laws are so stringent, like the lawyer was saying, to the extent that when your own spouse or your would-be significant person in your life gets you into an intimate situation and you're going beyond a certain point and they say stop and you don't stop, it you is considered them. abusive. To the extent that they said that if even when a man thrusts his genital into a woman and the woman says withdraw, you have no choice but to withdraw. Any action that continues can be used as a basis to charge you. And that's why sometimes the men say that the law is a it's is unfavorably tilted towards the women and against And they the say men. a lot of the young ladies uh, nowadays are I know my rights women. And, 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 and so they think that um, and for many people even, I've, I've had a lot of speeches around abuse and many people are concerned that we may end up creating another monster where now women get more abusive, not maybe physically, but knowing they have the law to back them and, 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 and mentally and emotionally abusing the men. Yeah, I've sat with men who have been traumatized by their spouses. For instance, they deny them any intimacy. And they expect the men to stay faithful. Many men will stay faithful, but a few men will stray away. Now, and I've had young ladies in relationship with married men, and when you talk to them, you say the wife does not respect him. The wife does not give him intimacy or sex. The wife does not do this. The wife does not do that. So what happens is that this young girl sees herself as an alternative response to filling in the void that the man is encountering. So there are situations of men in the office, I'm not justifying this, but the women who are married must also be careful because gradually some men are beginning to think that once they tie the knot, nuptial wise, they have been caged. There should be no such feeling for a spouse. It's a consensual a action between two parties who are willing mm. and know that these are choices we are making. And it's mutual, so I always call it mutual accountability, mutual responsibility. I am accountable to you, you are accountable to me. I'm responsible for you, you are responsible for me. And we keep that, and then the flow goes. But when one tries to be a solo individual in the relationship, soon you'll be looking for support outside your, the context of the relationship. And that lends itself to infidelity. Mm straight away. So there's a need for young ladies who are single not to become an answer or a solution to a man who is not having what he claims are his entitlements in a relationship. There's also the need for all of us to understand that uh, when it is that we go into a relationship and we are seeking that we consummate it into marriage, oftentimes scarecrows are minimized. And so you get impressed by the outlook you get attracted to what is external. But you see, when you sit finally in a marital situation, you are now having to manage the weaknesses. Because you get drawn to the allure of the positives mm. and the strengths. Mm. Then you go in, now you have to manage the weaknesses. So if you see some indicators that are unpleasant, that create disquiet in you, the earlier you give it attention, the better. Mm. To wink over it, Marriage has a way of amplifying and magnifying situations. And marriage being an amplifier will make those things grow exponentially. And now it's almost going to be like a monster now. And you have so grown that you cannot anymore tame it. Mm. So, the so, wild so as a counselor, and I know you're a pastor as well, how important or what's the role of instinct in this? You know, mm. because sometimes you hear a lot of things you say, I, I, I felt it, but I ignored it. My gut feelings. Yeah. So how how do we, you know, bring instincts here? And if your if your gut says call it quits, just do it. Yeah. Well, many people call me pastor. I'm a licensed youth minister. Yes. All right. Okay. But in my local denomination, I'm an elder. Oh, you're an elder. So All I, right. I just for the public, <laughs> so that I don't right. put displeasure All for right. myself. All right. Now, you see. For a woman, don't dismiss your intuitions. Because it's a way that gives you 
the ability to pick signals that potentially can cause you trouble. So whenever you have an intuitive inclination, step back, review. It may be wrong, it may be right, but it's better to be cautious. You just said, err on, er on the side of caution mm. than become reckless, mm. only to wish that, oh, oh, I should have known better. Yes. So there's always an opportunity to know better. Of course, some women uh, went over some of these things. They, they took it lightly and didn't see the potential threat that will be awaiting them. Um, but they took those decisions. Oftentimes, women are better judges in these things. Men usually will be very dismissive of our um, threats and dangers. Um, one of my friends, Sue Berlin, we usually illustrate it with the man being like a bull and the woman being like a butterfly. When you compare the construction of a bull, a bit ragged, rough, tough, and when the bull is grazing, hardly would it lift its head when he hears a tractor because it's busy and grows in some activity. Now that's men, they are project driven, target oriented, get it, go for it. Okay, now women like butterfly, as she illustrates, the slightest change of wind direction, the butterfly is looking for a new place. And they are fragile, very tender, they are driven largely by a sense of security, safety, assurance. So when a woman does not feel assured in a relationship, hardly would they open up that much. So if you look at the mischievous characters who are males, what they do is offer a woman security, safety, assurance. Then the woman the opens up. Yeah, so all your feelings and fears of vulnerability and danger all just evaporate. Mm. Then it hits you like a snowball. Boom! Then you go like, ah! You look up to yourself and go, how did I get here? It's because you are offered a sense of security. So when a woman trusts a male, it's also a potential mm. trouble spot. Mm. So whoever you trust, you've got to be careful around them and operate this simple mantra, in God I trust. Every human being, including myself, I will monitor. Mm. Because, you see, I've had people who are high up. Some are even lawyers. Some are bankers, senior banking officers. And they are dealing with clients who potentially show that they are manipulative, who show that they are abusive. So there's a need for every woman to be cautious mm. whenever you're dealing with anybody. Mm. And every man also, you have to be careful not to be manipulated by some of the adventurous young ladies and older women who are out there. All right, Emma, let me just make a few comments. But if you're yeah. at home and you manage to get yourself out of an abusive relationship, maybe you may just want to share how you did it, how difficult or maybe how easy it was for you based on your approach. And uh, this is from Shaipu. You're saying most ladies will prefer to um, be well fed by an, by an abusive spouse than have their freedom on an empty stomach because most of them marry based on financial grounds and that's what you think. And uh, this one says the lady did well. You're talking about that uh, fire officer issue. Senior officers employ ladies uh, than men sometimes because of this issue and it serves them right. They will now be fair making their selections during employment. Okay. All right, you are Paul, Dio, and G, you're in Zion. Wow, thanks for your comments. And uh, this one says that, Counselor, have you ever experienced a case where a woman willingly has sex with a man, steps out and starts accusing you of forcing her into sex? Oh, certainly, certainly. Especially when the person is looking for something from you. Mm. I mean, I've had situations like that where the man then tells you that this girl actually came Consented. you could see she she came prepared for it everything she did lends itself to that but my question has also been when you saw it what did you do you followed like an ox being sent to the slaughter you made that choice so you cannot excuse and i always say don't delegate the responsibility of your personal choices to anybody we are all managers of our own emotions managers of our body managers of our thoughts so don't say you are responsible for what i did others will say you made me do it who said so you chose to do it because if you look at the rigorous nature of sexual activity it is usually unthinkable mm. to even imagine that somebody comes into my room at that wee hour and then succeeds in lying on bed when i have the opportunity to escape i don't escape 
they, they have so many things the there dynamics. that are that needs engaging mm. now i would encourage every and anyone to defend themselves when you are in a state of discomfort when you are threatened when your safety is compromised and sure like in kenya there were incidents of people uh, straying from their marital beds and the wives were slashing the penises of their husbands i mean i won't encourage that but then you know what interesting there's a there's an article online you can go and look at it there's a whole video thing this guy comes up with a male um undergarment that is metallic and men who strayed away from their spouses who wear it before they go to bed with so a padlock oh it's an interesting one wow I mean, it's an interesting <laughs> one I, i'm sure i would watch that uh, later after the show but you can join the conversation uh, our telephone lines are open zero three zero two two one one six nine one or zero three zero two two one one six nine two zero three zero two two one one six nine one zero three zero two two one one six nine one uh, no, 692, sorry. And uh, I'll be uh, glad to hear what you have to say, but please keep your comments simple and straight to the point. This one says, this issue should be critically investigated. Uh, it's too terrible. This is Mohammed in Astro Damongo. And as someone is wondering why lawyer Ampau is talking the way he was, they're saying, uh, well, uh, he speaks like he's a woman. Uh, okay, I don't believe you have heard the young, uh, the man's side of the story. Could he just go there one day and start doing this? And Clement from Sinyan, and that's what um, he was trying to explain. Per the law, even if the person is your spouse or your girlfriend, yeah. you cannot engage in sex that you're not consented to. So exactly. the point is that I don't want it. I don't want it. I have Patrick from one on the phone lines. Hello, Patrick. Hello, Patrick. Let's hear you. Sorry, my name is Rafik Adams. No, Rafik, right? Let's hear you. Sorry about that. Rafik, yes. let's hear you, please. Okay. Uh, I think one mistake we have been making is that uh, it's good that marry before relationship than relationship before marry. If you marry before relationship, all these problems will not act. Okay. You understand? So let us encourage people to marry before relationships are good. Are you saying this to marry not. before relationship? Yes. Okay, can you explain? Because mm. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to understand. You when you marry, if you see the girl and you, you love the girl, you marry her. After three months, you are in a relationship and you marry her. You continue to love each other and continue to build their love then to say that let me try to see as to whether her behavior or this thing is good before you marry her oh so for you for you, you someone should not uh be in a relationship for someone for such a long time before they marry the person yes, thank you yes. so much for your your comment and your opinion mm -hmm. but uh, how would yeah, you react to that I as think, a counselor i think we are fixed you appreciates that what is happening that we are discussing in terms of sexual assault it's not about the relationship issue. It's got to do with people's attitudes and the values and how they perceive people in terms of their weight and dignity. If you respect someone, you don't forcefully do things to them. You don't inflict pain and hurt them mm. because that is not an indicator of love. Not at all. So there's a need for, for, for us all to be humane in mm. our attitude towards one another and be respectful in our treatment of each other. I like that word, respectful. Uh, powerful Bolga, you've joined us. Please have your say. Hello, Paul. Yes. yes, good morning. Yes, we can hear you. Please have your say. Yes. I, I think that um, we, we, we have to be... It's not like, uh, like Law was saying on, on, on the line. It's not like it's a threat to men or it's crazy fear and panic in men. But the issue is this, so many men uh, feel like if I'm at a higher position, then then I can use my position to get whatever pleasure that I want, which shouldn't be the case. Yeah. 
and and we need to get all our organizations and offices and and and, and all institutions okay there should be that kind of uh disciplinary uh sector or section mm. whereby any officer any senior officer who goes who tries to misuse his office mm. to be dealt with in stricter measures especially when it comes to abuse of of, of office in in, in 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 the pleasure line mm. we should have stricter measures not just going to report in the law for the imprison you so these things do not work what, what I, I would prefer to see is that if an officer or a senior person misuses his office, that person should be given to, like they, they do in other countries, uh, community services. Mm -hmm. you, the person begins to feel that kind of shame. Mm -hmm. that even, even, I would even prefer that you put a tag behind him. <laughs> the person does a community service because he tries to rape a lady. Mm. So you have this card behind you and you are working, cleaning the gardens. Everybody see that shame alone will even make you to, to uh, make other men to resist from it. Mm. Thank and, you and very much, Paul. We'll, we'll, we'll have a better future. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, now Paul is recommending public shaming for such officials. Angela from Ngofo, thank you so much for joining us. Hello, Angela. Um, hello, good morning. Good morning, Angela. Please have your good say. Hello, good morning. Hi, I can hear you. Please have your say. Yes, please. My name is Angela. I'm calling from Nkofu. Please, I want to ask the pastor. Um, I'm a an uh, um, kind-hearted person. Please, I received a certain lady into my home and I took the person as my sister. Rather, unfortunately, I was doing everything for this lady, not knowing this lady was going out with my husband for almost two years now and I didn't know so. I got pregnant, not knowing my husband has even impregnated the lady and the lady has aborted the pregnancy. When I confronted the lady, the lady said so many times that even my husband has told um, her that he is going to divorce me and marry her. Meanwhile, my, my husband is the same person um, who has been telling me different stuff about this lady and when I so, like, talk about it, then my husband will be crying and be telling me his story, but he is still doing it. Mm. I've even reported the case to our family members, but um, there is no change. All right, Angela, thank you so much for sharing your experience with us. Now, let's let's talk about this i'm sure she's been emotionally abused yeah. that's the only category i can put her experience under psychological she wants, abuse psychologically she she yeah, wants you to she yeah. wants you to well i mean it's unfortunate about it. you know anytime you're bringing a third party into your home you have to be very careful extremely careful you don't just bring people simply because you are sympathetic towards them uh, there are choices that we make that cost us a lot, and this would be one of those kinds of choices. Um, any spouse who is doing this to their spouse in the union is treating them unfairly. Um, there's no reason to justify such a conduct. I also associate myself with the earlier caller who preferred that we look at non-custodial sentences for people that will bring about change in behavior mm. and how they treat others. I would really love to communicate with Angela. I don't know how that could be possible, but mm. if there's a way she can call, I'll leave my number at the front desk. Uh, yeah. The last time I gave that, when I was exiting, I had almost about 100 calls yeah. coming through. All right, okay, so Angela, if you're still watching, <laughs> this is what you can do. You can call you can call the line and uh, one of my producers will speak to you and will give you uh, uh, elder Amos Kevin Annett's number so that you can have a personal conversation with him because I'm sure he wants to get into the yeah, I need the to have of, yeah. of the issue thank you for Mr. Man. let's hear you hello hello yeah. good morning good morning please good morning. have your say yes yeah. Um, it's a nice program, but the program has to do with our rural folks. The most often we bring in nice laws, educate people, but how deep and well does it go with the rural areas? You see, and when we begin to apply these laws, and they are those who aren't wanted, because they don't know what is happening. And the law, as they say, ignorance of the law is not an excuse. These are the people who are not getting this information, they are not getting this education. 
Mm. The people transition, they do species in the cities, the town, those in the rural areas, both the men and women are suffering. Mm. They are affected. They are the vulnerable. They you not get this information. How do you get this across? Mm. Then the laws cut up with them. And they are those who suffer. They can't even afford to get better legal representation in court. We need to look at the approach. Mm. How to get so that the case can be shaped equally. All right. That is how it is. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, we do appreciate your comments, but we're running out of time. Unfortunately, now Miles is sending this message all the way from uh, the United Kingdom, and he says, "I work in an industry where we use a lot of ladies to execute activities. Mm. But it will surprise you, the kind of things some ladies are willing to do for thirty pounds. It's unfortunate that the old mantra we use is uh, use what you have to get what you want, and that is still in our ladies. And you, you spoke on that earlier, and then." Um, this one says it's good that this fireman's issue has come up. It will surely deter those harassing their young subordinates. Okay, thank you, Alias, for your message. And um, this one is saying that, okay, you're saying we did well by bringing you this morning. Uh, you're saying these are lessons that we need every day. Paul, in Wa Nadoli, thank you so much for your comments. But your comments on that. Well, well I think that so. um, increasingly when body cameras become very common, a lot of the older superior officers will be mindful of what they do. In nations where cameras are everywhere, you notice people comply. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't get away with escapades. You don't get away with these kinds of activities. So, I think that increasingly women should be more uh, conscious of their security, personal security. Um, anybody you bring into your personal space must be one you decided to bring on the basis of some indicators that you have confidence and assurance in. Um, I've had situations of young men who are also now going through this kind of sexual invitations and harassment. One young guy, mm. his office, one of his bosses came to him and said, I'm, I'm in love with you and this is a male. And it created such discomfort for him. From that day, this guy goes to the office and psychologically he's, even he's traumatized. Yes. Until one day something happened. He was filing some things on the cabinet when this man just came to him, accosted him and started kissing him. A man? A man. To a man? To a young man. In Ghana? In Ghana here. So you can imagine how many young men are out there also going through this new phase of harassment. So there's a need for us to talk about the issues empower people so confidently they can face up the issues and I, I think that multimedia can lead the way many companies in Ghana do not have workplace sexual harassment policies clearly outlined for everybody we do yeah mm. so you lead the way share what you have done and the reporting structures and the safety nets this would help people know that oh we also need to do the same and when somebody is found on the wrong side of it, then they face the consequences. Now, talking about empowering people in wrapping up, what should I do if I am in an abusive relationship? I mean, once you are in an abusive relationship, if you have found a way to remedy the situation is still not working, you need a third party to assist you. Mm. You need to find a lawyer, a doctor, I mean, I mean somebody who is a counselor, yeah, if you're a religious person, you're sheikh, you're imam, you're pastor, um, confide in those individuals to see how they can help you. If they themselves are the one perpetrating those things, then you need to speak to somebody other than them because they are vested interest parties. Uh, DOFSU is always available. They are there to support. Of course, their resources and funding is very minimal, but they will do as much as they can. There's a legal aid. There is the um, uh, women in law. They are also available. Um, FIDA is also there. We need to talk. We need to find solutions. And don't legitimize it by saying that you deserve it. You don't deserve abuse. Nobody deserves abuse. Everybody deserves dignity. That's a nice way to wrap up the conversation. Don't legitimize it by saying you deserve it. Nobody deserves abuse but dignity. Uh, it's been a very insightful one. We've gone to the legal perspective of sexual assault. We've spoken to uh, Elder Amos Kevin Annam, who's also a counselor, to 
help us with some of the things that we should pick up as cues if you are in, an, in a relationship that could be potentially abusive. And a lot of you have sent your messages, a lot of them. Let me just wrap it up with a few more. And then um, this one says that it's a good defensive act and I would definitely, it will definitely serve as a deterrent to all industries.